Now that we've set up all of our defaults, I've started the Blink project and it's time to look at the different tools we have available. Currently, in the upper left hand corner, I have the hand tool available. And if you remember, we turned that on in the previous video if you're watching these sequentially. This will allow us to select items on the screen. The next object down, you might see blinking as I tap it, adds blank screens to the end or after whichever slide I'm on. You can see the slide number in the bottom left going up as I tap. The next button down, the two rectangles, is a slide sorter. If you're familiar with PowerPoint or, or Keynote, you know that you can grab and move slides around. On the iPad, or at least and explain everything, you tap and hold, and then you get your options. I'll click away from that. The next tool down is the pencil tool. This allows you to write on the screen. Now, if you were to tap and hold the pencil tool, you'll get more options. We could change color, you could change thickness, you could change transparency. All of this stuff that you can do with the pens, I'm going to do a little bit of that. And now, here's what I have. Of course, what's the pencil tool without an eraser tool? So I'm going to tap the eraser and erase. Or, if I tap away, and this is a little unusual, I'm going to tap the pointer tool, which is the next one over. But you'll notice the eraser now is replaced with a circle with an X. I'm going to tap that. And I'm going to tap and hold, and you see everything shaking. There is a red X in the upper right hand corner of my writing, and I just tap that. So there's two different kinds of erasers there. And of course, the next tool is the pointer tool. And I can point on the screen. I just tap and drag my finger. And if I tap and hold the pointer tool, there are more options, and I do like it because they, they've been adding more options in the updates. And I, I kind of like that. I kind of like it's a pretty powerful tool if you're using this live in front of people. The next tool down is the shape tool. The shape tool will allow you to create a variety of shapes on your slides and explain everything. Currently you see a gray square with an arrow, and then you see a circle that is partially in the square and partially out. The arrow represents the shape that is going to be used if I were to draw it as it is currently selected. So if I tap the tool, now it's strictly an arrow, that's the shape I'm going to make. To make a shape, you tap and hold the screen, you drag your finger or stylus, and then you let go. That's what dictates the size and orientation of the shape. So. I'm going to tap and hold the screen. I'm going to drag my stylus. And when I let go, now my shape is there. Then using the move tool, I can move it around. Let's say I want a star instead of an arrow. I'm going to tap and hold the tool, select my star, maybe give it a red fill with a black border. Let's maybe make the border a little more thick. I'll leave it fully solid, no transparency. I will tap away to say I'm finished. Then I will tap and hold. I'm dragging and let go. And let's be a little more creative than this. I'm going to simply move it. There. That's the drawing tool. The next tool down is the text tool. To add text, typing text, not handwriting, typing to the screen, you tap the A, you tap on the screen where you want to type, and then you type. By default, the typing is oriented to the left. However, you could select Orient Center 
orient right. I like the left. The blue circle in the upper right hand corner of this text box is very important. That's how you change the size of your text box and that's a little different than text boxes in other programs. So I'm going to tap and drag that circle. And then instead of tapping away, which we do with the other tools, I'm going to tap the circle, the green circle with the check mark. And now I have my text box that I can now move around. A couple of things here that are an issue for me. Number one, I don't like the border around the text box. Number two, I misspelled hello. So let's fix that. I'm going to double tap. Now I'm going to tap and hold my A for a moment. And for text border, I'm going to get rid of it. Tap away. There's no more border. Ah, but I still have my typo issue. I'm going to double tap. I'll double tap again. I'm going to now fix my typing. I am using an external Bluetooth keyboard. Um, I love using those. Uh, then I will select my check mark and I am good to go. Now I have my hello. Those are the basics of the text tool. Next in line is the insert tool. Here you can insert an image if it's a PNG, not a JPEG. It must be a PNG. You can insert something from the web, which I don't usually do myself. I find that process a little on the tricky side. Or I can insert a PowerPoint, a keynote, a PDF file. And when you insert one of those things that are multiple pages or multiple slides, each page or slide will become a separate slide with an explain everything. For now, let's insert an image. So I'm going to tap the insert tool. I can choose a photo or an image that's already on my iPad. I can choose from camera if I want to take an image right now. I could take one right now. Or I can select an image from one of my online storage devices or cloud storage devices, World Wide Web storage devices, whatever you want to call them. I'm going to choose from Dropbox, go into my folder, and I'm going to select this image of a giant buck from the Grand Canyon. I could choose multiple images, however, I'm only choosing one, and I'm going to tap on Done. Be careful, Done doesn't mean done. Not quite, not, not done done, just done. Before we're done done, we have some options to select from. We can rotate the image. And every time you select the rotate tool, it's 90 degrees. You can choose crop. So now that I've selected crop, I can tap and drag over an area. I then select crop again and that removed all of that stuff outside of that darker gray area. I'm going to undo that for the moment. By the way, the undo only seems to work with crop, not with rotate and not with free select. And finally, I'm going to choose free select. And if I do a lovely job now of drawing around this little fella, this little fella, he was huge. I am six foot tall and my head was not as high as his back. He was absolutely gigantic. Now I've drawn around him, I can select the crop tool again. And there I have Marvin. I'm going to call him Marvin. And I'm going to select done, which means done done. And here's Marvin. Since my selector tool is what I have in my toolbar at the moment, I can now move Marvin around. There's Marvin. 
you already know what that eraser X does, so I will move on to the layering tool. The layering tool will allow you to move things basically forward and backward. Every time you add an object to a slide on Explain Everything, it becomes its own layer, kind of like adding transparencies on top of each other. And we can adjust those layers using that tool. For example, let's say I want Marvin to be under the word hello. I'm going to tap the layer tool. I'm going to tap and hold Marvin for just a moment, then let go. And I see this box around Marvin, and I'm going to send him all the way to the back. Now you could select all the way to the front, although Marvin was last, so he is already at the front. I could send him backward by one layer, which would also do what I want to do. And then I could send him forward by one layer, which there isn't one because he's currently at the top. So why don't I go ahead and send him back one layer instead. Send backward. And now it's behind the word hello. Let's say I move this hello and I bring Marvin over this way. He's a couple of layers away from that arrow. If you recall, we added the arrow, then the star, then hello, then Marvin. Marvin has now been put behind hello. And if I wanted it behind the arrow and the star, I could do it again and select send backward and do it again and select send backward or select my layers tool tap and hold for a moment let go and send him all the way to the back by selecting send to back now he's behind everything very simple very easy can be a lot of fun or layering next button down is undo. You gotta love the undo button. If you mess up, undo. Undo. Okay. And last but not least is the zoom in, zoom out tool. Now we know if you have the selector tool, the top one chosen, and you select an item, and I just tapped on Marvin, I can now zoom in, zoom out, turn, twist, all that lovely stuff. But let's say Marvin is off screen. Like this. I have all this stuff that kind of off screen. But I want it all together on one screen, but I like the positioning. If I were to tap the bottom tool, now if I use the pinching motion on my fingers, I can zoom in and out of the entire screen or the entire stage as it would be called in this situation and now I can really do some adjustments so the top tool is for the individual item and you can also rotate it very quickly very easily and the bottom tool is for the entire stage Last but not least, the full screen tool. This isn't really an editing tool, but it's something you really should be aware of. If you're presenting in front of an audience, in front of a class or, or a conference or something, you could select the full screen tool, and you still have some of your basic editing capabilities. You can still add a slide. You can still sort slides. You can still hand right on top. You can still use your pointer tool. And you can advance slides left and right, just like you would on a PowerPoint or a Keynote. But this gives you the maximum real estate that you can have on your iPad or on the screen you're using to project to. And those are the basic editing tools of Explain Everything.